Okay, in this video we're gonna look at a pretty interesting sequence and find its limit. So the sequence whose limit we're gonna find is the following. It's the limit as n goes to infinity of this finite sum from the nth Fibonacci number to the n plus first Fibonacci number of one over k. So um, in order to find out what this limit is, we need this following uh, pretty classic result that says if you set h n equal to this harmonic number, so that's just the sum from k equals 1 to n of 1 over k, then the limit as n goes to infinity of h n minus the log n converges, and it actually converges to a well-known constant which we'll talk about later. Okay, so let's first uh, look at this uh, lemma. So in order to prove this limit, we're going to use the monotone sequence theorem. So that means we need to show that it's bounded um, and that it is monotone. And so we're going to show that it's bounded below and that it is decreasing. So let's first show that it's bounded below. And we can do that uh, just making a nice calculation here. So notice hn minus the natural log of n, that's gonna be the same thing as the sum k equals one to n of one over k minus the natural log of n. Just using the definition of this harmonic number. But this is actually bigger than or equal to the integral from one to n of one over x dx minus the natural log of n. And there we can use the fact that uh, the function one over x is a decreasing function. We can also look at it graphically in the following way. So we can graph the function one over x that looks like that. And then we can put in this sum as a uh, sum of areas of rectangles. So notice, let's say one is right there, then we get that for the first term, we get this rectangle for the second term, this rectangle for the third term, this rectangle for the fourth term, and so on and so forth. And so notice this integral is going to be the area under the orange curve, but this sum is going to be the area of the red rectangles, and obviously that sum is going to be bigger. But both of them are finite because we're looking at a finite sum and then an integral over a finite region. Okay, great. Now we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus to calculate this. So notice that's going to give us the natural log of x evaluated between 1 and n minus the natural log of n. But that's going to give us the natural log of n minus the natural log of 1 minus the natural log of n. But now notice that the natural log of n and the natural log of n cancels. And then we know that the natural log of 1 is 0, so in fact here we get 0. Okay, good. So what we've shown is that uh, this harmonic number minus the natural log of n is always bigger than or equal to 0. And in fact, we could take this equal off given the fact that uh, sort of visually and it's not so hard to prove carefully that we uh, have an impossibility of an equality here. It's a strict greater than, which makes this thing strictly greater than zero. Okay, good. I'm going to clean up the board and then um, we're going to show that this is a decreasing function. So we'll have it's bounded below by zero and it's decreasing. And by the monotone sequence theorem, that means it will converge. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is show that this sequence right here is decreasing. So let's set a n equal to our h n minus the natural log of n. And let's recall that that's equal to the sum k equals 1 to n of 1 over k minus natural log of n, if we want to write it like that. Okay. Great, and now what we're going to do is look at a n plus 1 minus a n. And so this should be negative in order to show that this is decreasing because that means that the next term is smaller than the previous term. So let's see what we get here. So this is going to be the n plus first harmonic number minus the natural log of n plus 1 minus the nth harmonic number minus the natural log of n. 
Great. But now we can kind of put like terms together. So that's going to be the n plus first harmonic number minus the nth harmonic number. And then um, plus the natural log of n minus the natural log of n plus 1. Great. But now it's not too hard to show that those difference of those two harmonic numbers is going to give us just 1 over n plus 1. Great. And then we can use natural log rules to rewrite this as uh, the natural log of n over n plus 1. Okay? And now we're going to do one more thing, and that is rewrite this as 1 over n plus 1 plus the natural log of 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. And that's just by rewriting the argument of that natural log. Great. But now the next thing we'll do is we'll say that this is equal to f of 1 over n plus 1, where f of x is equal to the function x plus the natural log of 1 minus x. Okay, good. And so now that's our nice setup that we'll have that we're going to use to show that this is decreasing. But I've run out of room, so I'll move this to the top of the board and then we'll continue on. Okay, so we ended the last board with the following. We have a n plus 1 minus a n is this function evaluated at 1 over n plus 1, and that function is given by x plus the natural log of 1 minus x. So now the next thing that we'll do is we'll show that f of x is less than 0, and that's going to be for all x in the open interval 0 to 1. But that's going to show that this is always less than zero. In other words, a n plus one will be less than a n. And so let's see why that follows. That's because one over n plus one is always within that interval um, zero to one. And so that's easy to see. Okay, so we're going to do this in the following way. So let's first notice that f of 0 equals uh, 0 plus natural log of 1, which is equal to 0. Great. And then the next thing that we want to do is take the derivative of f. And notice that the derivative of f is given by 1 minus 1 over 1 minus x. So that's easy to see. The derivative of x is 1. The derivative of natural log puts something in the denominator. But then by the fact that we have a minus x there, we have a minus sign in front. Okay, good. Now, the next thing that we can do is we can combine this together. So we'll give ourselves a common denominator. So we have 1 minus x over 1 minus x. So we're rewriting 1 that way. Minus 1 over 1 minus x. Okay, so it's pretty easy to see that that's going to be equal to minus x over 1 minus x. Okay, good. And then also notice that if x is between 0 and 1, not including 1, then that means that the denominator is positive, but the numerator is negative. So that this is clearly less than 0 for x between 0 and 1. Okay, good. So what we have going on here is that this is 0 at x equals 0, and then it's decreasing everywhere after that, um, which will make it negative for every x in 0 to 1. So we have uh, proven this claim right here. Good. And then the next thing that we can say is since 1 over n plus 1 is in the open interval, 0 to 1. What that tells us is that a n plus 1 minus a n is less than 0, which is the same thing as saying a n plus 1 is less than a n, which means our sequence is decreasing. So now we've shown our sequence is decreasing. So that means by the monotone sequence theorem, we have this thing is bounded below and it's decreasing, so it must converge. And actually, it's going to converge to a constant which we'll call gamma. Um, and good. So we're done with the proof of this lemma. So uh, we'll move on and apply this lemma in order to find our goal.
Okay, so now that we've proven our lemma, we're ready to look at our goal. So uh, we'll do that in the following way. So let's take the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum uh, k equals the nth Fibonacci number to the n plus first Fibonacci number of 1 over k. Now I'm going to rewrite that in a little bit different of a way. So this is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum k equals 1 to the n plus first Fibonacci number of 1 over k. So I've extended this down, but now I need to subtract off the first terms up to the nth Fibonacci number. So I'm going to subtract the sum k equals 1 to the nth Fibonacci number minus 1. And I need the nth Fibonacci number minus 1 because we pick up at the nth Fibonacci number. So the one that I have to kill is the one right underneath that. And again, this is 1 by k. Okay, good. But now, notice that means that the limit we're actually interested in is the limit as n goes to infinity of the harmonic number of the n plus first Fibonacci number minus the harmonic number of the nth Fibonacci number minus 1. Great. Now, we're going to apply our lemma, but we're going to apply our lemma in a slightly different way. So we want to apply our limit in the following way. We know that the limit as n goes to infinity of hn minus the natural log of n minus gamma equals zero. And then we'll use the fact that since this converges to zero, all subsequences of this also converge to zero. So plus this is true for all subsequences. So that means if I replace um, n with a Fibonacci number, then I get the same sort of thing. Okay, great. So now what I want to do is add into this limit a couple of copies of zero that correspond to this limit over here. So let's do that. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity of the uh, harmonic number of the n plus first Fibonacci number minus the harmonic number of the nth Fibonacci number minus one. Good, and now I'm gonna add a couple of copies of zero to that. So I'm going to subtract, I should say add or subtract a couple of copies of zero. So I'm going to subtract the limit as n goes to infinity of the harmonic number of the n plus first Fibonacci number minus the natural log of the n plus first Fibonacci number um, minus gamma. So that's the first thing I'm going to subtract. So I know again that all of this is equal to zero by my lemma. Good. And then I'm also going to add in the limit as n goes to infinity of the harmonic number evaluated at the Fibonacci number n minus 1 minus the natural log of fn minus 1 minus gamma. And again, that term we know converges to 0 by the limit as well. Okay, so now the next thing I can do is push these limits together, and we're doing that because we know these two converge to zero. Technically, we need to prove that this one converges before we can push those together, but I'll let you guys think about that. Um, that's not too hard to show. So now notice, if we push these li limits together, the harmonic numbers cancel and the gammas cancel as well. So notice this harmonic number right here is going to cancel with this harmonic number right here. This harmonic number right here is going to cancel with this harmonic number right here. And then finally, these two gammas are going to cancel each other too because all of those have opposite signs. So notice that's going to leave us at the natural log of the n plus first Fibonacci number minus the natural log of the nth Fibonacci number minus 1. Okay, good. But now we're almost home free, so we can use uh, the logarithm rules here to say that this is the limit as n goes to infinity of um, 
the natural log of the n plus first Fibonacci number over the nth Fibonacci number minus one. Okay, good, but since the natural log is a continuous function, we can bring that limit inside, but if we bring that limit inside, that limit, that limit is not too hard to find. In fact, it's related to a limit uh, we've calculated in a previous video, and what we're going to get is the natural log of phi, where phi is the golden ratio. Okay, great, so I think this is a good place to end.